Bonnie Rice. Dutch, I really enjoy the show with you. And James, my question is about some of the older talent that were on top when you were starting, especially James the Paper. In the South, tell me about Gentleman Thor Weingroff and Carl and Kurt von Brauner. One of the Germans was actually a pilot. And there's going to be a lot of names here, so pick one or two. What are your thoughts on the interns and Dr. Ken Ramey, Sir Steve Clements with Don and Al Green? I'd like to know more about Ron and Don Wright, Bearcat Brown and Len Rossi and Big Bad John. All are old names who would have been on top when you were starting out. Uh, Big Bad John, I've not heard that name in quite a while. No. Big Bad John, he got killed. Did he? He got got shot by some drug dealers or something in L.A., I think, (laughs) or borrowing money or doing something. He was, listen, back in the days, especially with tag teams like the interns and and the Germans and the Germans, especially because there was still really hatred for the Germans during that time because a lot of guys had been in the war and, I mean, they just had natural heat. All they had to do was walk out on the floor and, Everybody hated the Nazis. They were real Nazis, not the Nazis people. They they call people Nazis now, but they don't even know what the word meant. But these were, they had legitimate, legitimate heat. And the intern, same thing. I mean, they they weren't Nazis, but that was the days of the manager and the tag teams. So they did well. Ron and Don Wright did great in, in East Tennessee. They were two of the most hated heels uh, in history over there, I would think. And the thing is, they both worked regular jobs and wrestled. So they were like weekend wrestlers, kind of, and they would just do TV over there. And, and I'm trying to think, how did they do on the regular job? <laughs> If one was driving a truck and any other, the other one was, uh, I forgot what he, what he did, but they were really, really good guys. And Ron Wright had a, a deal where he would put on his hand and it was um, like Nux, but he knew a guy who was a welder and they took that Nux and they, at the end of it, they would build a little bit of a, like a, some metal and brought it up to, to a sharp point. It was only about that, that, that high, but it was sharp and he could take it. He could hit you one time and he had a lot of heat. So I didn't know he did that. So I said, can I see that? Like an idiot. <laughs> he said, yeah. yeah. So I went like this and I went, and he looked at me, he said, I'm like, no, you didn't just do that. And I, I don't know, you can't see my hand, but I still got a scar right there where I did it. It bled like a, cause I hit it pretty deep. I was just playing, but I didn't do that again, by the way. But in, it, in it one of the, the questions, it was, it was it the wedge, it, I believe. It, that's what it exactly was, but it was about this long. It was like the length of what covered your knuckles. And then it was a wedge, and it came up, and it wasn't very long, uh, wasn't very tall, but it was like a piece of piece of metal is like a knife cutting you, and if you tap somebody with it, and he had heat with that for years. Let's stick with let's stick with Ron Wright then. So, did you? How well did you get to know him? I mean, did you actually work in their territory? It was East Tennessee? Did you say? They never left East Tennessee. Never left. Because like I said, they had they had jobs. So they stayed over there with their families. Now I work with Ron Wright. He's a legend. Ron and Don were are legendary in East Tennessee. Maybe not to the kids today, but to people who had watched wrestling for for years and years. They were they were the resident heels. People hated them. Of course they ended up turning good guy later on. People loved them. <clears throat> but uh, Ron, he was a pilot, you know. So he flew somewhere to this town when he was hot. And people knew he flew. And he did something 
the week before the people got mad. So when he left that night to go back to the plane that he owned, guess what he found? They burned the plane up. <laughs> they set it on fire at the airport. You know, it's like a private, private runway and nobody there. They just went out there and set it on fire, left it. So when he came back, there was no, there was no plane to fly back on because it was all burnt up. And they never found out who did that. I wonder why. So, <laughs> did, you have, did, did you have much interaction with Ron in Smoky Mountain? Because wasn't he doing like a wheelchair thing where he was like he a did a wheelchair and, and 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 worked it to finally one day he came out of that wheelchair and did a screw job. Oh, he was hilarious. He would talk about oh my god. He'd <laughs> he'd take a rag, rub his head like, oh, it's so hot. I'm just suffering so much. Oh, you never know. And he was he was pleading, oh, pitiful me. People still hated him. <laughs> <laughs> and then they did this did this angle one night where he actually wasn't supposed to get out of the wheelchair. He got up. And he either hit the guy or he gave dirty white boy something, which proved that he had been faking this whole time. And it got over, but I, but I think he stayed in the wheelchair. It was actually a pretty good gimmick. I think I was doing commentary during that time too. I remember Bob called, look, Dutch, he's not crippled. Anymore. <laughs> That's when you could use the word crippled. So I, I guess we would say that, but he was, he was interesting to call, did great interviews. He had such a Southern accent. You may not even, you may have not, you personally, you may not been able to understand him. 